Welcome to Let the Quran Speak and welcome to our series, Muslim Heroes of the Past. Dr. Beer, we are looking now at uh, Aisha, the wife of the Prophet Muhammad. Uh, she was a very young woman when she married the Prophet Muhammad and she was a scholar, a respected individual, someone who was outspoken, um, someone who was an intellectual and who taught Islam to other people. Yes, uh, and uh, when when we look at the marriages of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and sometimes people ask, well, why marry this younger uh, woman? Uh, so this has given us one of the reasons by analysts, uh, uh, you know, that the uh, Aisha was, uh, especially due to her young age, she was able to live much longer after the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him's demise, and into the period when people actively started to. Uh, try to remember and record uh, what was said and done by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Uh, so they naturally wanted to get the information firsthand from somebody who had been an eyewitness to the life of the Prophet. And uh, whereas the male companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, saw him outdoors and they could report on his uh, public activity, uh, somebody was needed to report from the inside. Well, mm. How was the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in his domestic life? And Aisha, radiallahu anha, God be pleased with her, that's what the phrase means, uh, was the one to give us that insider information. Uh, and, uh, and often a man, uh, you know, looks good to the outside world, but he's not good to his family. Uh, but Aisha, uh, may God be pleased with her, was the one to give us the insider's report to show how good the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was to his family as well. Mm -hmm. And not only, of course, uh, just his uh, relations to his, uh, uh, to his uh, family members, but also uh, how he prayed, how he behaved at home. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, one could be, uh, you know, putting on a good public face, but uh, he could be hypocritical. And uh, in, in privacy, um, he could be, uh, you know, someone else altogether, maybe an evil person. Um, but uh, his family was able to report on his domestic affairs and his conduct in privacy. And uh, Aisha was, uh, you know, the, the one to do that. It, it is uh, known that, uh, you see, uh, reports about the Prophet, peace be upon him, are, are usually traced back. Uh, from the time they are recorded in the books that we have, all the way back through a chain of narratives, going back to the first eyewitness uh, who said or, or heard, uh, who, who said that they heard or saw the Prophet, peace be upon him, acting or speaking like this. Uh, and uh, Aisha is at the top of uh, uh, 2,210 uh, 2, such narratives. Wow. Uh, yeah, so she's, she's one of the most... Uh, uh, prolific uh, narrators of uh, of hadiths. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Shabir, I understand that sometimes she would hear hadith and she would actually say, look, this doesn't make any sense, right? She would hear people saying, oh, the prophet said this, and she said, no, there's no way he could have yes, said that. Yes, yes. Uh, she emerges a scholar in her own right, and um, and which is good for us in that uh, the this uh, world of scholarship in, in early Islam is not uh, totally dominated by men. Naturally, men carried the lion's share, but... Uh, uh, the, uh, you know, Aisha has a very important place in our history in that uh, she gave us, uh, you know, a, a woman's perspective on, on many things. In fact, it is often said that uh, half of the knowledge uh, was with the men and half of the knowledge was with Aisha. Mm. Not so much quantitatively, but in terms of uh, the division between the outside world and the inside domestic life of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Uh, but uh, more to your question, uh, sometimes people narrated things about the Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, I, because maybe they just heard it and they narrated something superficially without pondering the deeper meaning of what they're speaking about. Uh, or, you know, they might have seen one thing being done and then they, they drew an inference from that, which uh, is an incorrect inference. But Aisha had uh, a deep insight and, and she... Uh, she tied things together. She recognized that what the Prophet, peace be upon him, was teaching uh, had to be in harmony with what the Quran was saying because the Quran was being revealed to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as an instruction to him first and foremost before it comes to anyone else. And he had to be the first practitioner of what the Quran dictates. Uh, so if, if somebody reported something that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said and she recognized that this is contrary to what the Quran says, uh, she would correct them. She would say, no, it, it couldn't amend that because the Quran says this other thing. Um, and, and very prominent companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, were, were um, uh, criticized by her uh, for their narrations 
uh, when these narratives uh, went contrary to the Prophet, peace be upon him, or went contrary to the, what the Quran says, uh, or on occasion, what she knew to be uh, the practice of the Prophet, peace be upon him, that would infer something else. Uh, so, for example, uh, she knew that uh, the, the home of the Prophet, peace be upon him, was so small uh, that uh, when, when the Prophet, peace be upon him, got up to pray within his home, uh, for him to, to prostrate, he had to prostrate at the very place where Aisha, still half asleep, had her feet stretched out. So, so when he was ready to prostrate, and, and Aisha sensed that he needed the space for his forehead on the ground, that's when she would withdraw her feet and he would prostrate thereupon. Um, and um, so, so she, she rejected the narratives uh, that people were bandying about, uh, saying uh, that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said that if a woman passes in front of you, uh, then that is going to break your prayer. Because she, for her, she was right there in front of the Prophet, peace be upon him, when he was praying. And that didn't break his prayer. Uh -huh. uh, so, so, so Aisha has uh, uh, really come down to us as a very important uh, teacher, and and one that brings uh, a perspective from the uh, domestic life of the Prophet peace be upon him. Doctor, she also shows us how to be a woman. You know, because we we all, we have this depiction of Muslim, uh, the traditional Muslim woman who is quiet and demure and kind of like sits in the back or sits in her place. But this wasn't Aisha. She was very outspoken. Um, she wouldn't let her rights be violated. Like if she thought something was wrong, she would speak out against it. She even led people in battle. She would teach people Islam. So she was very active, even in the public sphere. Um, I, I know that even the Prophet Muhammad, she would kind of tease him or she would question him about things, right? She wouldn't just take it as it is. So it's very interesting to know that there's this diversity of Muslim women, even in the Prophet's time. There wasn't just one specific type of woman. Yes, and I think you put your finger on it. Like sometimes we, we try to make everything fit the way we conceive, either of ourselves or what we think to be an ideal. And we forget that human beings are many and varied. And uh, Aisha uh, it represented, you know, a kind of uh, uh, a woman who uh, is able to speak up for herself, to challenge men in the public uh, domain. Uh, to lead men in battle. She, she led uh, a, a battle campaign uh, that uh, included among her followers very prominent companions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, some who are uh, reportedly the, um, uh, the, the Ashram al Bashara, th those 10 who were given good tidings that they will enter paradise, including Talha and uh, Zubair, prominent companions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Uh, so for her to be able to do this and to be in the midst of battle as well, um, uh, this uh, shows that uh, you know women's uh, uh, place is not to be curtailed uh, to the home, um, um, but a woman can serve in a wide variety of uh, various uh, uh, functions in within a Muslim society. We'll leave it at that. Thank you, Dr. Shabir. You're welcome. Assalamu alaikum. We have some exciting news to share with you. As you know, Let the Quran Speak has been on TV screens and social media for 22 years. We've been reaching people all around the world, spreading positivity and good, and helping people experience the beauty of Islam and the accomplishments of Muslims. We've been shooting in this very space for the past two decades. And now, with the help of Allah, we're about to get the keys to Muslim Media Hub. If you like what we're doing, you're going to love Muslim Media Hub even more. Because it's the next step up. Think new TV shows, podcasts, social media content, and film. It will have new talent, more youth, and a lot more space and resources to do what we love. Spread the message of Allah. Our Muslim Media Hub costs $2.4 million. And for that, we need to raise $300,000. Please give whatever you can. Every dollar counts. It's our collective responsibility to share the message of Islam with our fellow human beings. Please help establish Muslim Media Hub so we can do this. It's a sadaqa jariya, something that will continue to be of benefit to the Muslim community long after we are gone. Thank you, and may Allah bless you and your loved ones today and always. Assalamu alaikum.